Rubam Kabat Moran, or the art of Khmer classical dance, is more than a thousand years old. It was developed as a prayer and movement for rain and fertility, and the prosperity that this meant for an agricultural society. Dancers, who were both men and women, were offered to temples where they served as living bridges between heaven and earth. Their dancing bodies carried the prayers of the people up to the gods, and the will of the deities was delivered back through them to the people and the land. There are a lot of curves in Khmer dance. Our backs are arched, our knees are bent, our toes are curled, our elbows are hyperflexed, and our fingers are curved backwards. All of these curves create a serpentine impression, and this is important because before the introduction of major religions, Khmers and people all over the world. Practiced animism. Serpents were especially important in this belief system because, in their fluid, curvilinear movement, they mimicked the flow of water. So, to invoke the serpent in your dancing body then was to conjure the image of rivers cutting across the earth, inspire the flow of life-giving waters. As you can see, then, Khmer classical dance is a transformation of nature, of both the physical world around us and of our own internal universe. We have four primary hand gestures that we use. Can we do them together? Yeah. Okay. This is a tree. That tree will grow, and then it'll have leaves. After it has leaves, it'll have flowers, and after it has flowers, it'll have fruit. That fruit will drop, and a new tree will grow. And in those four gestures are the cycle of life. These four gestures are then used to create a whole entire language with which dancers express ourselves. So, for example, I can say, "I, I." In dance, that would be, "I," or I can say, "Hey, you, come here, come here." In dance. Come here, or go, 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 and everything from love, to sadness, to anger, can be expressed through the dance as well. There's a certain magic in the way that things are filtered, transformed, and put together to create limitless possibilities in art. The Khmer word for art, selapa, in fact, at its root means magic. The artist, the selapa kong or the selapa karani, then is nothing short of a magician. I am very proud to say that I belong to a long line of magicians. From my teacher Sopilin Chim Shapiro, to her teachers who were stars in the royal palace, to the ancient dancers of Angkor, and to the primal villagers from which the art form originally took life. That said, our cherished heritage was once almost completely destroyed. If you are wearing glasses, please stand up. If you speak more than one language, please stand up. If you have light skin, please stand up. Your glasses meant that you could afford healthcare. That second or third language you spoke 
indicated your elite education. Your light skin meant you didn't have to work beneath the sun. Under the Khmer Rouge, who took over Cambodia from 1975 to 1979, we would all be dead now, targeted because of our assumed privilege. Please. You see, the Khmer Rouge looked to Cambodia, and they saw centuries of rigid inequality. The king and the few elites around him had all the pleasures and comforts of the world, while the mass majority suffered from backbreaking labor and harsh poverty. You don't need a history book to see that this is true. The Khmer word for I, for me, is Khmer. This very same word can also mean slave, and dancers were, in fact, were known as Khmer Prehrabam, or slaves of the sacred dance. The Khmer Rouge sought to end slavery in Cambodia, yet somehow they turned everyone into slaves to do it. They became the oppression that they sought to end. They evacuated the capital and forced people into labor camps. They tore families apart and brainwashed children against their own parents. Everywhere, people were dying and being killed, losing their lives from disease, overwork, execution, and starvation. The result of this is that an entire third of Cambodia's population was lost in less than four years, and in that number were 90 percent of Khmer dance artists. In other words. Nine out of ten visions for the tradition and future were lost. Thankfully, however, it was my teacher's teachers, Jia Sami, Sot Sam On, and Cheng Pon, who would lead the revival of the art form from the ashes of war and genocide. One student, one gesture, one dance at a time. They wrote the love, magic, beauty. History and philosophy of our lineage into the bodies of the next generation. Nearly 40 years later, Khmer classical dance has been revived to new heights. Yet somehow, it still exists in a vulnerable environment. The disastrous effects of war still haunt Khmer people today. It is written in our bodies. Manifested in the genetic passage of PTSD, and in families facing cyclical poverty and immense cultural rifts and language barriers. Yet beauty is the most resilient thing. Beauty has this ability to grow anywhere and everywhere, at any time. Beauty is what connects people through time and place. Beauty. Is a liberation from suffering. As Khmer artists work to revive our culture and country, we find that there are many paths in which to move forward into the future. And in a tradition where we often don't know the dancers' names, who they were, what their lives were like, what they felt, let me propose that we move forward honestly and openly from Khmer. Khmer not as in slave, but as in conscious service. Khmer, I, me, flowering. My name is Promsaran Auk. I am Khmer, and I am American. I am the child of refugees, a creator, a healer, and a builder of bridges. I am my teacher's first male student in a tradition understood by many as female, and I founded Cambodia's first gay dance company. I am the incarnation of the beauty, dreams, and power of those who came before me, the convergence of past, present, and future, and of individual and collective. Let me then play that ancient and ageless role of the artist as messenger. By sharing the words of Cheng Pon, a garden with only one type of flower, or flowers of only one color, is no good. This is a reminder that our strength, growth, survival, and very existence lies in diversity. 
It is, however, a message of courage as well. For a flower does not ask for anyone's permission to bloom; it was born to offer itself to the world. Fearless love is its nature. Thank you. <laughs>